I love product photography. Well, I love almost all photography, but I really love product photography. And I've shot a lot of stuff over the past few years, and I've picked up a thing or two that I think would be good for everyone to know. So if you like product photography as well, here's a couple of tips for you. So first off is backdrops. And there are so many ways that you can make a backdrop for a photo, whether you're using like a whole wall behind the product, or maybe you use sheets or just like wooden panels, or maybe you have a whole, I've even seen a setup with a no LED television. I don't judge, but that's, that's intricate. But if you are using something simple like a sheet, then a simple way to make it stand on its own, to make yourself a simple, a backdrop stand, if you will, is to cut out a piece of cardboard, the size of, well, the sheet, attach the sheet with some uh, bigger paper clips. Then you simply grab a couple of clamps and you just attach them to the bottom of the setup, and there you go. Now you have a backdrop that stands on its own, and you can use that as your background. The same trick actually also works if you use something like a wooden panel. I'll show you. Here is a panel that I've repurposed for backdrop usage, and while those same clamps wouldn't work in this regard because it's too heavy, if you just get some super clamps, presto, that works. And that is not going anywhere. Now, once you have your backdrop, never forget props. Props make almost any scene better. Now, of course, there is such a thing as too many props, but to get to that point, well, just take a few off and you'll be fine. So if you're shooting with something like a wood background, having something green, something like leaves or vegetation can really help bring some life and some feeling into the shot. So the green will complement the wood and it will seem like it fits in place. Of course, you want to make sure that the prop fits. So don't go putting stuff like leaves when you're shooting a microphone on a concrete background. That might not make sense. But if you're shooting something with something like a wooden background, adding some vegetation to make it feel like a forest or a, a jungle or something like that can go a really long way to making it feel more alive. Okay, so there is no such thing as too many lights, right? I've said it before and I'll say it again. I absolutely love lights. There are whole scenes that you can make with just different lighting. And whenever I see a new light in a new shape or a new form, I just wanna test it in every way I can. But in product photography, all those lights can really, really, really come in use. Everything from the biggest key light to the smallest accent light. So if, we're, if we take this bottle, for example, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be turning these lights on and off. It's just so I can illustrate my point. I can just use a key light, simply. Just one light to do it all. I'm just gonna do that right now. Now that would be completely fine. The bottle is lit up and you can see it. It has some light fall off and we're all good. And you can stop there. But if we add some more lights, like a fill light or an edge light, for that purpose, I'm gonna use this little tube light thing. So just turn it on, match the uh, color temperature, you know, because you want all the lights that are, well, lighting the subject to be in the same color temperature, or you're gonna have a hard time editing 
it. There are exceptions for, but as a rule of thumb. Yep. Now, ideally you would use two of the same kind of lights because that way you can be relatively sure that the color accuracy is the same. But on top of that, it is easy to shape two lights that are producing the same output. Now, my other Zhiyun light is out of battery, so I'm gonna use one of those and one of these. Now, the idea of this is to simply just give the bottle some shape. So I'm just gonna bring my key light back, turn that light off and take a new shot with the added edge lights. Now when we do that, we can see clearly that the shape of the bottle is coming out more. And especially when utilizing something like a back background, this is really important. Or the edges of the bottle will just simply fall into nothingness. And we could stop there, but if we add more lights. So uh, when I made this backdrop, there is a gap between the backdrop and the floor or the ground, whatever. And that is for a very specific purpose. What that allows me to do is take another light and put it behind the bottle. So we'll have like a big light stream coming from behind, lighting up the background behind the bottle itself. So adding that to the edge light and the key light. Well, let me show you what that looks like. And now we could stop there, but if we add even more lights, like these accent lights, we can bring in some color, some, a different feeling, since you can get some accent happening in front of the product itself. We can make it single color, we can make it complementary colors, or if you want to go for some sort of a wild effect, maybe you go for a blue and green, so... No, a, I mean a blue and red sense. Uh, maybe you have the cops coming to the release of this product, I don't know. It's silly, but hey, it could be fun. I'm not doing it, but you can. But one thing that can also do is maybe we make these more yellow. That's the wrong direction. So we can make it a bit more of a warm image. Something like that. And with the combination of all those things, the colors, the edge lights, the backlight, the key light, we get something like this. Okay, I may have gotten a bit carried away, but you can see the point, right? That you should never think that, well, you have too much light unless it's actually clearly way too much. Because light can bring out things that wouldn't have been visible otherwise. And if you just want an overall, overarching, solid, well-lit shot, you're just gonna need more light. Most likely. Also, of course, you want to utilize th things like bounces and stuff like that, but these can definitely help and be easier to set up, even. Despite all the things you've seen. Okay, and next up, lights. No, I didn't lose my point in the script, but I'm actually talking about different kind of lighting. I'm not talking about lighting the product per se, but more so what lights can bring in terms of shapes and interest in the background. Let me explain. Okay, so what I've done now is I took one of the edge lights, which was the, the tube with the two fins, and I put that behind the bottle. So that is by itself going to edge light the product now, as well, as the middle tube shining through the beer, the bottle, to give some, a little something of an amber glow through the bottle, which is gonna look great. Then I also took 
a ring light and I added that behind the other one and now those together will have like these fins coming out of the bottle and it being encircled by the ring light. And here's what that's going to look like. And there we go. As you can see that you could use lights to make interesting shapes. That is definitely something you don't expect to see when you're just simply looking for a photo of a beer. And it just piques your interest. Of course, if you just want a dark background in your picture, you can just do that and just forego this whole thing. But making interesting shapes using light is just a handy trick to have up your sleeve. Now, before we hop into the last one, if you're liking the video so far, go ahead, scroll down and uh, give the video a like. I'll give you a moment, so just come back when you're ready. All done? Okay, so this last one is for all of you who want a more minimalistic, well, let's see, you just want a blank white background. So let's have a, let's have a little look. So if you want a photo with a white background, of course you could just use something like a white piece of cardboard or a white sheet or even paper, but I'm telling you that there's a better way. Get something like this, a diffusion fabric, and make that your background. But don't stop there. The important part comes afterwards. What you wanna do next is you wanna put a light behind that diffusion. And now, well, the background is definitely gonna be white, but not only that, you're gonna get some fantastic backlighting on that product. And instead, the white cardboard you had, just make it a fill light or a bounce on the edges. That will possibly be even easier to use. Right now I'm propping this up with some, well, two tripods, but usually I, I can just hang it off that mic stand over there. So make do with what you have, but this is extremely easy to use. Let me just show you what that looks like. And there you go. The, you get a white background, you get some fantastic backlighting. It's, it looks so good, especially on a bottle like this. Simple and effective. Usually I would use something like a studio light to fill it, but right now that was all done with a Zhiyun M40. Now sponsored. But that is all the tricks and tips that I have for you this time. If you have any favorite photography tips or tricks, let everyone know in the comments below. They don't even have to be product photography related, just put them down there and let's all learn together. Okay, well, that's all I got for you this time, so have a great rest of your week and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.